Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to. Oh, he's not here. Wait, you're I'll not. Do it. I'll wait. do it. You're, you're, you're the wrong Kyle, but let's do it anyway. Welcome to Kyle. That guy's in three times. <laughs> That's how he sounds. <laughs> he sounds like Cartman. I kick you in your dick. <laughs> this is not guys in three cows. This is episode 50. We're going to call this 51. 51. 51 ish. 50 ish. 51 ish. Yes. We know we've done 50. We'll give you that much. Definitely. Um, let's go ahead and make our introductions real quick. Mr. Cam- I was about to call you Mr. Collison, I'm sorry. Mr. Campbell, <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and... Uh, Hello, everybody out there, out there in Radio Land, uh, Podcast Land. Uh, this is uh, Kyle, uh, the only Kyle represented right now, so uh, I will be the lone Kyle tonight for a <laughs> while. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, at Team Chaos, or Facebook, Kyle J. Campbell. All righty, and I am Devin. You can find me on Twitter at Devin the Six Three. That's D E V I N T H E Six Three. You can find me on Instagram at All Steak No Sizzle. That's one word. Make sure you check out the Facebook page. Uh, yeah, Reality Era News. I, I drew a blank there. <laughs> Reality Era News, where we talk wrestling. Go ahead and uh, join the group there. Uh, also, follow Knockouts and Three Counts on all of our social media. You can find most of them at Ko Three C Pod. That's on Instagram and Twitter, and I think it's the same on Facebook as well. Or you can just go to ko3cpod.com. You can find everything there. Hey, if you're looking for a car, make sure you check out SoftfieldQualityCars.com. Once you check out their inventory and you decide, hey, I want that car, you go in there to make that <laughs> purchase. <laughs> Use the reference code 19309. 19309. 19309. And you'll receive $500 off on your purchase. And a uh, quick shout out to BCWA. Me and uh, Mr. Collison were there this past weekend. Had a great time. Uh, you'll be hearing uh, our conversations with some of the guys there at BCWA coming up soon, including my man, Boom Boom, Colt Cabana. You had a little interview with him. Uh, I'm jealous of that. I am too. That man. was so – that that's that's big, man. That's, Devin, that's did the big. remote recording go okay? Did you have problems? Um, it, We got it done. <laughs> do, do we have actual audio files? Huh? Do we have actual audio files from it? You needed those? <laughs> are you, wait, are you asking me or are you telling me? I'm asking you. <laughs> do, we, do we have audio? Did it work? Yeah, okay. I think. I, I hopefully, uh, I turned it in. We'll see. Dave, please <laughs> tell me we have audio files. Help. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it, it was great meeting Coca Bell because legitimately he is one of the people that inspired me to get into podcasting in general. He's one of the innovators of wrestling podcasts. So it was a great opportunity to have him on the show. And uh, we've invited him to come back on in November because he's going to be doing some stand up here. So we'll uh, clue you in on those details once we find out more. But uh, that would be so cool. I know that that, that I mean, that's uh, he wasn't the first wrestler to ever have a podcast, but he was probably the first real a wrestler that had a podcast that got famous. <laughs> yeah, like, and it actually lasted and was successful. And good. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I I think I'd probably say him, Talk is Jericho, uh, Edge and Christians, and... Well, but you got to realize, man, Cole's been doing this since, like, 2009. Yeah. So like, he, like, he really was... He, like, he legitimately, like, was one of the first people to do it, man. So shout out to Cole. And uh, BCWA and Clash, we're going to be doing a lot more with them in the future, so... Look forward to uh, those details coming up in the future. So, Mr. Campbell, what's on your mind in the world of wrestling and MMA? MMA, I'm actually excited for a Connor fight again. That is coming up next Saturday, October 6th. I won't be able to watch it, but when I turn my <laughs> notifications on, when I turn my phone on, uh, when I get off work, oh, I imagine I'll have a bunch of y'all texting me. <laughs> um, wrestling, uh, I, I hate the shield now. Wait, okay. I, I feel like you're you're kind of at a point that I'm at right now, man. Are are you starting to get to the point where you're starting to take a step back from yeah WWE? Yeah, like like I said, like I've always come in and out of wrestling. Like I've never ha- watched it set up. For <laughs> 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 well, the first match I ever saw, which was I think was probably a Saturday night's main event back in the '80s. Wow. Uh, from the first time I ever saw Hulk Hogan Hawk up to Last week, I have not watched every single episode of Raw, SmackDown, NXT, uh, t- uh, what, this Tuesday in Texas, Shotgun Saturday Night, <laughs> Saturday Night's main event. Uh, I've never watched every single episode. I've, you know, dabbled in and out. Um, I've been back full time, I guess you could call it, since uh, 
since probably about WrestleMania 31. So that's what after WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. So because I, I really what I really didn't see a lot of the Yes movement because I was out of it. Right. Um. But what what has you at that? What has you at the point now where you might step have, out again, man? Like we were just talking about <clears throat> uh, before the show started uh, with our producer. Uh, well, he's sober, Randy, now. Um, <laughs> but uh, we were talking about the state of the DCEU, if that's still what they're calling it now. Whatever it is. Um, how you literally had the Justice League and you you dropped the turd. Like, how hard is it? That's literally like having the keys to a Ferrari, parking on a hill, taking the emergency brake off, and then just closing your eyes and letting whatever happens, happens. Right. Like, you don't care. Uh they literally have all the tools right now to be the best they've ever been. They have the largest roster they've ever had. They have the best athletes they've ever had. I, I've said it a few times on this show. I feel like this generation right now is probably the most talented that they've ever oh, yeah. had, ever. I mean, if you look at from a lot of the guys mind. from like the '80s, '90s, and late '70s, one of the guys they say was such an innovator and was you know so out there was Dynamite Kid. Right. You couldn't watch one of those matches right now. <laughs> watch a Dynamite Kid match and then try watching a Neville match. Right. Like, we've, there's been an evolution, you know. And right now, they have the tools to be, and that's the thing. I think they've gotten complacent because, yeah, you have New Japan. You have, right. you know, Ring of Honor. You, Just had all in. Yeah. You know, it's still different. You know, it's counterculture, which is a different vibe. You know, we go to these events, and it's a completely different event if you go to a real WWE show. Right. But... It's gotten so to the point now where it's like they've really just gotten lazy. Like you literally have people on your roster that you're not using that are so good. You have Ty Dillinger. Ty Ty is he's a good mid card act. You don't even need to put a belt on him, right. but you could throw him out there Tuesday night at eight forty five every week and put him on that match, and you would have a good match. Like you used to have uh, back in like 05 and 06 with Matt Hardy. Right. Matt Hardy, I used to love. That's why I became a Matt Hardy fan. I was a Hardy Boys fan, obviously. But I became a Matt Hardy fan when he was Matt Hardy version one. Because right. every week he would come out there like 8.30, 9 o'clock, have a good 10-minute match with somebody, entertain me. And it. I looked forward to seeing him every week on SmackDown. Well, I think part of the problem is, <laughs> like I said, I feel like this is the most talent that they've ever had. But I feel like... They have almost too much talent. And the weird thing is yeah. they have a three-hour Monday Night Raw show. They have a two-hour SmackDown show. That's five hours of television. And you still don't and do you that much. you don't have enough time to get everybody on it. And mind you, you can't have everybody on TV at all times. But mm-hmm. uh, when's the last time we saw Oscar? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know? It's like uh, Charlotte Flair is, is like – the, the the main piece of your women's division on SmackDown, and you know, she was disappearing for like t- long periods of time. Mm-hmm. Nia Jax is just not making comeback. It's like you you have too much talent almost, mm-hmm. and you don't know what to do with. And it. it's not that hard. I mean, like granted, they don't do a lot of long form storytelling right now, which is fine. Not everything has to be a Ricky the uh, Dragon Steamboat and Ric Flair right. year long feud. You don't need that. It doesn't have to be a rock and Austin some, type. Some of them you do need that. Some you do. You, some you not, do. Not every wrestler needs that type of long time, long form storytelling. Right. But you could have guys go out there and just put on a good match. I mean, you literally like. When was the last time you saw Zack Ryder? <laughs> <laughs> you know. I can't you, know? Even tell you. And you got. And the thing is, is you have people that not everybody is a Daniel Bryan. Or, you know, a great technical horse. Not everybody's a Seth Rollins, right. a great athlete. Not everybody's a uh, a Dolph Ziggler, a great seller. You know, but you have the best talent you've ever had, and you go three, four weeks of just having the same Rollins-Ziggler match. I love both of them, but right. I don't need to see them put on the exact same match three weeks in a month and then put on that exact same match at the first uh, match of the pay-per-view. Right. You know, it gets repetitive to where I'm like, I've, I've seen this. You know, and it's not the wrestler's fault. You know, they're going out there and doing what they're told, but, like, right. you don't need to have Rollins on there every week. Or if you do, put them in a segment. Have them, you know what happened to the Rollins report? <laughs> that was what three weeks and it was gone. Right, and something else that I feel like is happening with WWE, and it's a good problem to have for the company. They're they're signing all these different big shows, like the show in Australia, the Crown uh, is it Crown, Crown Jewel? Jewel, yeah, the Crown Jewel show in um, Saudi Arabia again, Je- the progressive city of Jenna, Saudi Arabia. Right, but. <laughs> thing is it seems like 
they're promoting. It seems like they seem to be promoting like three, four pay per views at a time, and they've done it this ever since Mania this year, where mm-hmm. they had that first uh, show in, in Saudi Arabia, and it's like okay, it's well, too much. Yeah, here's a surprise show. So we're not at one point they were promoting Hell in a Cell, Evolution, and uh, the Super Showdown in Australia. Mm-hmm. I just literally forgot about Super Showdown until you just said it. Exactly, it's, and, it's and that's next week. <laughs> and the thing is, the brand split was the well, you know, quote unquote brand split 2.0 was supposed to eliminate having you know 12 plus pay per views a year because it got old. Right, fans weren't coming to them. I mean, you can't go to two pay per views in a month. You know, I I get why they're doing a lot outside of the United States because right. now people are tired of it. Like if if even if I had the time and the money to do it, I wouldn't go to a Raw every week. I wouldn't follow them around because I'm going to see the same thing almost every week. Right. Very rarely have I've gotten surprised from Raw recently. You know, and then like it's just it's not listen to your audience. Now, granted, yes, this is the internet. You can talk about smarks and internet smarks. You can also go kiss my ass. The audience tells you what they want. You know, we want a Dean Ambrose heel turn. You know, and the thing and, is, and the, they're, they're teasing it. The thing that pisses me off about the Shield is they keep going back to it when they already did it perfect. They came in, they were dominant. Right. They all held gold, single, uh, singular. They held gold in, uh, gold in the group. They had a great breakup. You got good storylines out of it. You got good baby faces out of it. You got until, and it wasn't his fault, but you had a new face of the company, really, in Seth. Right. Until you know, until hurt. he injured his knee, and then you really held that against him almost. Then when Seth comes, you do a whole twenty uh, WWE 24 about his rehab and recovery, a complete baby yeah. face documentary to where the Preach, guy's Preach crying. To the choir right now, man. He comes out. He gets the best pop you've had in months when he <laughs> hits Roman. And the next night on Raw, he's hitting the same heel promo, and none of you supported me. I literally cussed at my screen. I'm like, you mother... Like, how did you mess this up? You guys had the what? biggest baby face in the company right now just off of that great storyline coming back. Right. And then you had the thing with Dean. You could have had Dean just instantly turn heel to make him interesting again. Well, but... but it, it, and, I, and I hate having to do this, but it's the truth. That... Especially on Monday Night Raw, is booked literally around two people: Ronda Rousey, Roman Reigns. Yep. So if your initials are R and R, they're going to book everything to help you. And it's like who has more charisma? <laughs> so I, yeah. You know what? <laughs> who has more emotion? <laughs> I'm gonna say Ronda. I've actually met Ronda. She she's actually very funny. She smells good too. How, t- how, how, how big is she? she? Is she really that tiny? Um, she looks tiny. She she's got a little height on her. Really? Um, but she, I know she used to fight at one thirty five. She probably walks around at like one fifty five, one sixty. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, trust me, I wouldn't try. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I ain't turned on entourage. I'm, I'm looking that up. I'm not getting judo flip. Uh, but but, it's, but it, yeah, like I feel like they're they're booking the shows literally around two people, and it's like everybody else be damned. Like Braun Strowman. <laughs> What are they doing? They had, I mean, literally, that was that was literally lightning in the bottle. Nobody saw that coming. The first time I saw him, I'm like, the honest, and I will, and this is my hand of God. This is the first thing I thought when I saw him when he debuted on SmackDown with the uh, Wyatt family. I'm like, that's a Vince guy. Yeah. I saw him like, that's a Vince guy. He's not gonna have any charisma. This is just basically gonna be the new Snitsky. <laughs> like this, this, this is not. This is gonna be the new Hayden right. This isn't gonna end well. But, and he didn't prove me wrong for a while then. Squash match. I'm like, oh god, here he comes again with the squat. Okay, the jobber's gonna get beat up. Really didn't really hit until that Ellsworth match where he actually had a jobber. I that Ellsworth was the first one. Yeah. Okay. A, yep. No, I know he had a couple before that. He had a couple before. Yeah, a couple before Ellsworth. He had like at least two, three matches, uh, squash matches before Ellsworth. You sure about that? Yeah. I feel like Ellsworth and, was the first no, one. No, and then Ellsworth came. He was the first one that had a little personality, so I didn't mind. Any the man match. with two hands has a chance. And. Then it showed a little personality in him because he actually, I think he was talking during the match, messing with Ellsworth. And it showed a little personality because other than that, he was just jobber, hit him, pin, right. lift his head up, he had pin, that weird count, reverse, to, count reverse to five, choke slam or whatever. count to five, count to six, pin, you know, I'm tough. And then it started showing some of his personality and then they let him go. And I'm like, you guys literally have somebody who nobody, nobody saw that. I, you weren't, Kyle wasn't, Kevin wasn't, no. nobody I talked to was, wasn't before he really got that push, was like, hey, you know who I want to see? Braun Strowman. But 
so my question is, how do you go from early April, the dude winning in the tag team championship with a twelve year old kid? Nicholas, for those of y'all <laughs> looking for a, a trivia question in a bar. Like that it, that was like that that's like the ultimate baby face moment. He not not won- just that. How did you not have anything for him at WrestleMania? That's what it ended up. <laughs> they had nothing for him or the bar. You had nothing for your tag team champions and nothing from arguably your literally other than Brock, your biggest literal attraction. Yeah. Like people were waiting, people could not wait to see Strowman. Right. He is an attraction on his own. Dude, when 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 me and Kyle went, what's the bell? Ding ding. I can't reach it. Ding. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, producer Randy. When me and Kyle went the money in the bank and he won the money, number one, I didn't think they were going to give him the money in the bank. Nope. But then, two, like. I lost that uh, bet. The, the reaction was great. Like, people loved it. Like, I'm like, this is the guy. How, not to get, interrupt me, how bad have they ruined one of the best gimmicks they've had? They have ruined money in the bank. <laughs> the last couple years have ruined. And the thing, like I said, other than the Royal Rumble, that's my second favorite pay per view. I agree. Because. I agree it literally gives you somebody, and it, it's old school, you know, booking. This is the guy we want to be the new champion. This is going to be the next big face of the company. Mm-hmm. Back in the, what, the 90s, that was the Intercontinental Champion, the right. Workers' Belt. Okay, Brett won it, Rock won it, Austin won it, um, uh, Owen won it. Right. You know, this is the guy that we're, you're going to see a lot of him soon. Don't worry. That's what the Money in the Bank contract was. Okay, this is going to be a future world champion. Don't worry, this guy's gonna be big. Just keep your eyes on him. And then the Corbin thing. It well. <laughs> then this. Then a complete botch with it for the women's money in the bank with Carmella. I mean, Although, that, that title reign. I, that gender had a better title reign than she did. You think so? More entertaining. And I like. And think. Don't get me wrong. I like Carmella. I her character annoys me, right. but it annoys me in the fact that she's doing a good job. You know what I mean? Her character is supposed, supposed to, be to be annoying, annoying. Yeah. and it, it it doesn't annoy me to where I I don't want I I turn don't turn off her matches. You know she's gotten better in the ring, but it just she didn't need to be champion. You know one of those things not everybody needs the gold on their waist. She didn't need to be you don't, a champion. You don't think she needed it though? I don't because the thing is up until then she was not credible. Up until then she wasn't. Well, yeah, but, she wasn't but dominant. Having, but having money in the bank kind of. Makes up for that. It's like, hey, it, it, I, it gave I, I can push. sneak and get my title at any time. But then look what it did. That was at the detriment of Asuka because that was her big feud, which was her versus Asuka, and she won clean versus well, Asuka, what, twice? Three times technically well, what no, Ellsworth? No, because she she won it from uh, Charlotte. Charlotte. So really – Well, that was a that was the traditional – you get you're getting you get beat you get double teamed by somebody else because she got beat up by uh, the iconics. Right. Remember them. But once again, remember them. Yeah, what the last time they did? <laughs> See it's, what it's, I mean? A, man, See what I mean? they didn't need to be called up, man. I was that that was one of the ones I got sad about. I'm like, oh uh, man, <laughs> I liked y'all. Like, well, back to this whole the whole main roster. Is it to the point now where like anyone gets called up to from NXT, you just automatically like? Get I feel sad. sorry for them. There are I some, do. I. To, I honestly, and I don't mean this to be a detriment because you'll make more money. Yeah, you'll get and more I know sports, that's, that's what you want. That's your dream. Keep Bianca B- Belair in NXT for a while, <laughs> please. I don't want to see her come up on here. And then I don't. I, only time I see her is when they have the entire uh, roster on the uh, t- on the uh, stage when they're given an announcement or something. I don't want to. Ju- that be the only time I see her or Mike Kanellis. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot Mike Kanellis was even in the company. <sighs> And the things, like I said, it's not hard. You don't have to give everybody a 20-minute match. But, look, Tyler Breeze. It's been big because he just went and had a match in uh, NXT. Yeah, just saw. Yeah, and the thing is, I think that's good. Use NXT. NXT does not have to be its own separate thing, and then they get called up. Well, okay. Let me forgot about. Let me ask this question. Do you think that they need to add a third show? For, for a third show? Yeah. Oh, God, for, no. For the main roster. Oh, God, no. Oh, that, I don't think so because you have three hours on Raw. Right. You don't have to have the first 18 minutes of every Raw be <laughs> a promo. You know, be a Stephanie McMahon promo. You know what I find absolutely hilarious about that? You, you remember the first time they did that? Mm-hmm. Rock, Rock, I mean, um, 
uh, yeah, Rock, this is your life with mankind. Mm-hmm. You know, Vince Man was absolutely furious about that that mm-hmm. segment because it went so long. Mm-hmm. And that is the norm. That now. is that's the formula now. That's what they do every single week. And now. the thing is, that like, was lightning in a bottle because The Rock trying to keep kayfabe and not laugh, and mankind just being a mankind just being himself, just Mick Foley just being electric. Not to pardon one Rock's pun, but being electric on the mic right. and trying to mess with his friend. That was just good because The Rock's trying to not to break and Mankind's trying to break him. Now it's, you can tell they're reading off a script. Yeah. Nobody is their self. And that's what's boring about it because. Uh-oh. I was about to say, about to say did I die and go to Club Med? Just testing. Oh, I thought we had a call. We had reports of phone problems, but. Uh-oh. But, uh, yeah, it's just, you can tell it's not genuine. You know what I mean? I and, and and that's the thing. Like, when everybody always harkens back to the Attitude Era because 90% of the time it was a shoot promo. Yeah. Yeah, the Undertaker out there in sweats calling Vince McMahon an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, everybody breaking game of the Rock is who he is because he broke. What? You gave me the wrong number, jackass. That's why he didn't call in. <laughs> he didn't want you to call in. I gave the number that was on there. Oh, happy birthday. The one just standing I, on I, right hear, now. I hear you were born today. I hear you were born today. Happy I birthday. Was. For for those of you that can't see uh, the asshole off camera, it's Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kyle Callis's birthday. Happy birthday, Junior! Oh, and by the way, speaking of birthdays, I was supposed to shout my man's out two weeks ago, and I forgot. Shout out to Seath, man, past guest of the show, man. Happy birthday, sir! Happy, um, we're not gonna ha- say your age. Happy eighty uh, third birthday, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not to go off, it's just. Are, are you gonna join us, Mister Collis? Are you? Are you too busy drinking your uh, tropical juice? Are you drinking Java juice? Is that real? Or Hello? Caller! Hey, what's, what's up, up man? What's going on? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. The new XICW Warrior Rampage champion. And new. Mr. Isaiah Broner. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? Appreciate y'all for having me, man. Oh, no problem, no problem. Uh, Mr. Collison, welcome to the show, too, man. Haha, ha, I'm at the Lake Kyle this time. I couldn't get anywhere. That whole freeway is fucking flooded. Oh yeah, yeah. it's it's horrible. <laughs> I there. couldn't get anywhere. I, I I was already in Royal Oak, but I yeah, I'm glad I got here early. If it weren't for the fact we'd have had a guest, I may not have been on this show. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that right now. <laughs> but yeah. before gonna be rough getting home tonight for you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but uh once again we got the <laughs> we got the X I C W Warrior Rampage champion on the on the Wait, are you the first one? Yeah, looks like Yeah, it. first. Remember that for a trivia question in bars. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, welcome to the show, man, and congratulations on winning your championship, man. So we found oh, thank you. we found the issue with the phone, bro. My lovely co-host gave me the lovely. wrong number, too. That's Did you just call com- me lovely? That's not a compliment <laughs> you give another man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gay, so I'm not worried about it. Wow. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> your, your question? Oh, I thought that was my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, <laughs> be professional. We have a guest. What's in that Jamba Juice? <laughs> but uh, Isaiah, welcome Not to the alcohol. show, man. Talk to us about winning the inaugural uh, Warrior Warrior Rampage Championship. Uh, it's a huge honor. Um, XICW has been treating me real well. Um, still relatively new to the uh, wrestling scene. I've only been doing about a year now. Wow. So um, it's a huge honor. You know, much respect to everybody at XSCW. Um, it's very appreciative of the opportunity, trying to take advantage of every opportunity I get. Man, one year in and you're already a champion, man. Did you uh, come up through the Proving Ground series? Yeah, I was on last season. Um, unfortunately, didn't win at all, but uh, a lot of great experience. Got to um, team with DBA. And i um, learning a lot from him. He's been like a big mentor towards me. So um just learned from him. I was able to win the Proving Ground title uh, this past July. Okay. So i um, very proud of that. Just, just appreciative of every opportunity I get. Yeah, we got to start calling you the belt collector, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> So as Devin mentioned, you're a year into the game. You know, what got you into wrestling? How did you get into wrestling? You know, what brought you to the game? Um, that was my first love, actually. Um, I wanted to do it. That's my like, my first memories, uh, WrestleMania 6, Jimmy Snook and Rick Rude. Wow. Uh, I got a little sidetracked, though. Uh, 
wound up playing football, um, almost went pro. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I had a couple of workouts with the AFL, CFL, got hurt, and um, actually was into preparing for a bodybuilding show. And um, somebody, I got a couple people suggest that I uh, get wrestling a, tr- uh, a crack at it. So I went to House of Truth, and best decision I made. I wish I would have did it a little bit earlier, but, you know, still learning, and I'm glad I made the decision to go ahead and give it a try. All right, so I'm going to make this a tradition on the show for anybody that's ever trained under uh, Truth Martini. Do you have a Truth Martini impression? (laughs) Nah, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) But... Yeah. yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, right. but well, yeah, that's my guy, man. He's a huge influence, man. I'm so grateful to be able to pick his brain and learn from him, still learning from him. All right, we'll, we'll just leave the impressions to uh, the mysterious Mavado. He, he does a pretty damn good one. <laughs> 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 uh, speaking of uh, Mavado and uh, other people at XICW, man, who are some of the other people besides DBA and Truth Martini that you go to for advice to help you along in, in this uh, wrestling business in your first year? Um, honestly, everybody's been very helpful. Um, just keep an open ear to everybody, every veteran, um, not just the XICW, but every, uh, every promotion, um, MM3, Trey, ja- Trey Jacobs, um, my faction, Death Threat Army, uh, Aaron Orion, Jack Price, Alex, Alex Weir, uh, Kerm, um, Mavado. El Ridiculoso, um, Rough House Rob, every like anybody that can give me advice, you know, I'm, I'm listening. Anybody I can learn from, I'm, I'm listening, absorbing everything. Jamie Cox, um, he's been huge. Uh, Jackson Stone, everybody. Just uh, absorbing as much as I can. Um, any, any advice is welcome. Anything can get better. So, other than XICW, you know, what are uh, what are some of the promotions that we can catch you at? You know, in the Detroit area, or are you just wrestling mainly XICW right now? Because last we had I'm talked, not... you were talking about going out of state and things. Uh, yeah, um, I'm down there everywhere. Uh, I'll be at DSW Saturday, Detroit style wrestling, Pro Wrestling All Stars, um, Horror Slam. Clash anywhere I'm given the chance. UCW up um, up in Bay City, um, out of state Chicago, Berwyn Championship Wrestling, uh, New Generation Wrestling in Indiana. Um, wherever I can get in and get some time in and keep learning and keep growing, I'm at. So you said you haven't you know you haven't been in the in the wrestling game too long. What was something that uh, you didn't know before coming in here that kind of surprised you? The cardio condition. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm a, a bigger person. I, I came in uh, my first day of training. I was like around, like I said, I was preparing for a bodybuilder show, so I was around two, 260. Wow. Okay. So, you know, just just doing a normal basic role or stuff like that, I'm like, it ain't going to be nothing, man. First couple minutes, man, I was like, blown up tired as hell <laughs> so just being in good cardio shape um everything else is uh with repetition i'm able to catch on to a lot of stuff kind of fast just as long as you listen you're good who would um who would you say your style is similar to like who is somebody that um you would not emulate but somebody that you really like you can say that if you look at their matches you can also look at one of your matches um, people say, uh, Brock Lesnar, Samoa Joe. But you show up to your matches, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, now that, now that you're champion, you're going to be around, right? <laughs> yeah. Now nah, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lesnar, Samoa Joe, um, take a little from Roman Reigns. Like, I, I try to. Mix it up from as many people as possible. Just continue to learn different styles. Yeah, Isaiah, you mentioned uh, 
Horror Slam. And I've, I've never been to one of their shows, but I'm very, very interested in, you know, going to a Horror Slam show one They're day. interesting, for sure. Yeah, so t- let me know what I can expect going to a Horror Slam show. Some freaky shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say Halloween on crack. <laughs> it's different, but it's, at the same time, it's very entertaining. Like they do, they they run their promotion very. It's become very popular in the state of Michigan in a short period of time. Like they do an amazing job uh, from start to finish. Um, it's a very good promotion. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, make sure you're there. I know uh, the next show. I think Marty Jannetty's going to be there. Um, <laughs> no, Adam Rose is going to be there soon. Uh, Congo Kong, uh, he'll be back there. Um, yeah, man, if you get a chance, check it out, man. It's definitely worth the time. Um, guys put on a hell of a show. Can't, uh, can't say much more about it, man. It's one of those things you got to just go and experience yourself. So with all these different promotions you've been to, we've kind of got a thing on the show asking about things like locker room etiquette. We've had things like keep your baby mama out of the locker room. Wash your balls. Wash your balls. <laughs> shake everybody's hand. Uh, be respectful. Don't be a jerk off and wear a championship belt to the show. Uh, <laughs> what are some pet peeves that you have in the short time you've been in the business? Um, Just being respectful. Like I say, like I, I'm, I'm, rather, I'm a rookie, so... Um, I'm still learning and just trying to make sure I don't piss anybody off, um, not to get ahead of myself or like for newer guys, just don't get too far ahead of yourself. You no, know, once you stop being receptive to learning, like you're not going to grow, you're not going to get better. But just, as long as you're respectful to me, that, that, that's, that's the biggest thing I've seen in this business. It's all about respect. So you said you've been a fan since uh, WrestleMania six. Who would be uh, some of your all time favorites, or will be one of your all time favorite matches? Uh, all time favorite: Kurt Henning, Scott Hall, um, <laughs> Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, of course. So you're a new generation. Eddie Guerrero, <laughs> uh, newer generation. <laughs> new uh, the, uh, the newbies. Uh, it's not relatively new, but AJ Styles, uh, Seth Rollins, uh, Roman, Samoa Joe. Uh, big fan of Randy Orton as well. Really like his stuff. One of my favorite matches. Don't shake his hand, though. Older matches. <laughs> <laughs> older matches. Um, SummerSlam, I want to say, was it 92? Kurt Hennon and Bret Hart for yes, the Intercontinental mm-hmm. title. Yes, sir. One of the newer ones. <laughs> oh, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, WrestleMania 25. Okay. That's a good one. That's, That's a damn good match. Can't go bad with those. So we <laughs> talked about your football career. What uh, what position did you play? Uh, outside linebacker and defensive end. The Lions need you. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. I don't care what he said. I was gonna say it anyway. You could have said you were a punter. I was still gonna say it. <laughs> hey man, we beat the Patriots. I, I was fucking. trying. <laughs> hey, I, was too, I, was too sh- I was too short to play DM for them. So, oh man. Well, you know, I, I was gonna play football too. I was gonna play ass back. <laughs> <laughs> so like every time I try to get in the game, the coach would tell me to get my ass back on the bench. But. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just love that joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you said you play you play football. You you uh, tried out for some proteins. What school did you go to? I'm still uh, Northern Michigan University. Okay, so you were a Husky. A Wildcat. Wait, Northern Michigan in the hu- what am I thinking about? Oh, Nebraska. Uh, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Wait, Washington. Uh, Come on, guy. Wait, University of Washington. Wait, Northern Michigan isn't in Marquette? Yeah. I thought they were the Huskies. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Apologize to my friend Charles Shelton who went to that school, played football there too. 
That lets you know how many Northern Michigan games I watch. Hey, I, hey, I watched you guys. Go Huskies. Uh, that ain't us. <laughs> <laughs> I went. I went there. Yeah, I went there, and I ain't watched that many. So I don't feel bad. <laughs> man. So, what what's next for Isaiah Broner in wrestling, man? Um, I want to be the best at this. Like it. My mindset, I'm not trying to be one of those guys who just say, hey, man, I wrestled on the weekends. Like, I want to continue to elevate um, as many shows as possible in and out of in and out of Michigan. Um, as far as I can, as far as I can go with it. Um, yeah, just want to be the best at it. Every in every way possible. Just continue to keep growing. Keep dominating. Just keep uh, moving up the ladder. Or is there anybody that uh, you have your eyes set on coming up soon to, to wrestle, especially at uh, the XICW show at Kobo or any other shows you have coming up? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, El Ridiculoso, I think that would be a <laughs> nice match. Um, I love working with MM3, uh, Dre Jacobs. So I love to have another uh, match with him. Uh, DBA, you know, uh, it, I think that'd be an interesting one. Uh, saying that he's been, uh, how he had me under his wing, per se. Um, maybe GQ or Junta, uh, one of them one on one. That'd be a good one. So I've got a question completely unwrestling related. When we met you at XICW, you were telling me a little bit how you had either trained in MMA or that you liked MMA. With everything that's about to come up, I want to hear your thoughts on the whole Connor and Khabib fight. Um, I think Connor might be in trouble. Okay, who do you got? You got to pick one. Oh, look at you! Actually. I'm going. People pick now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Khabib. Yeah, I'm going with the upset. Uh, I don't think, I don't think Connor and mine is doing no more. Wow, I'm betting on both. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it, it, you don't get off yeah. that easy, bro. Since we went to Isaiah, you two got to give your thoughts too, and I'll give mine as well. Well, we'll do that next week when we preview the fight even more. The fight's next week, fool. That's what I'm saying. We have a show before that next week. Ah, aha. Uh-huh. We got a uh-huh. guest next week, but all right, yeah, we'll talk about. It. But um. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Khabib is the favorite going into that fight, isn't he? Isn't he? I haven't seen the odds. Man, cause I, I don't remember the last time Conor has been an underdog in the fight. I, I want to say he's like a slight underdog in this fight, man. But I I, I have to say as far as Floyd. Well, of course. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm like, I was about to say. That's, that's what got me. I'm like, I don't think he was the favorite. We, we don't, we don't I, I think maybe the, maybe the D, one of the Diaz fights. I'm not too sure. But, yeah, I'm not too I'm not too sold on him on this fight. He's on, he don't look focused to me. That press conference, he, I don't know if he was high or what, but he <laughs> kind of he kind of seemed a little off to me. Yeah, he, I, I don't think his heart's in it anymore. I think once he got that money from the Floyd fight, he was like, I don't have to do this shit anymore. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I got one more of my contract and get this done. He's like, man, y'all, so, y'all not paying enough. The crazy a, thing with this a hundred, fight. A hundred M's, man. I, yeah. yeah. You can whoop my ass for a hundred million. Fed, I don't care. I would have fed X and... I would have fed X titles back like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, Dana. Man, the cra- it's, the, it's been real. <laughs> the crazy thing with that fight is anyone that knows Connor knows he can stand up. But the crazy thing about this fight is anyone that knows anything about Khabib, I would imagine, would say about the same thing. I think if it stays on its feet, Connor will knock him out. But I just don't see Connor being even. I don't care who he brings into his camp. I just don't see him bringing anybody in that's going to be able to, in two months' time, be able to replicate, you know, the type of pressure that Khabib puts on people once he gets down, gets him on the ground. Khabib wrestles bears, and, literally. Dude, <laughs> like I mean, the guy wrestles bears. The fight, the fight I oh, use as an example. Bears. The fight I use as an example with that is the whole um, Edson Barbosa fight. 
Dude, he held his fucking arm behind his back, shoved his head <laughs> up against the cage, and just fucking beat this guy until they fi- the ref finally said, okay, he's had enough. I'm like, dude, if Connor, you, if you get put on the ground like that, if Nate it's Diaz over. beats you up like that, not that Nate's any ho at all. I'm not trying to say that he's a punk. But if I feel like the pressure that Khabib puts on as opposed to what Nate did are two totally different things because Nate will kind of pepper you and he'll work his jiu-jitsu stuff. Khabib is going to use his wrestling, hold you down, pin you down, and beat the hell out of you. Oh, you didn't say it, man. You got to say the word, man. Huh? Wrestle fuck, man. <laughs> he he <laughs> does. He does <laughs> wrestle fuck. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. Like, literally, at, you people will hear this from our BCWA show. He literally used the word wrestle fuck, and I'm like, I am using that from now on. Man. I, can't, on I can't believe you've never heard of somebody wrestle fucking somebody. <laughs> no, I've never heard that before. Well, Kyle, maybe we uh, get in, are involved in different circles than you were involved in. <laughs> Happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> and they didn't even pour me shots. What assholes? Oh, we got you, man. <laughs> you got here late. <laughs> shit. No shit. There was a reason for that. <laughs> it's okay. I put a birthday hat on your head in the video. I see that. And thank you very much. Thank That's you, what Randy. I wanted. Thank you, voice of God, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah, as you see, we like to have fun on this show, man. <laughs> and, we're not so, even, oh, yeah. and we're not even drunk this time. Since we've gotten your thoughts on favorite wrestlers and favorite matches and all that stuff, is there anything with the big shows that are coming up? Being Super Showdown, you've got uh, how many Jewel, we got? <laughs> all that shit. Like, are there any Jewel matches denial. on those cards that are uh, Roman- you know exciting to you guys? Romancing the title belt. <laughs> um, Kobo uh, XICW on October thirteenth. Uh, MM three DBA. Uh, we just announced another steel cage match, but they're gonna have it wrapped around bar wire. Mm-hmm. Top wrapped around bar wires. Uh, weapons is going to be um, sides of the cage, so it's only somebody got to win. So I'm looking forward to that match because uh, that War Games match that they just had at Masonic, it, it was definitely uh, worth the price of admission right there. Um, I don't know if it's going to be at Cold War or when exactly it's going to be at. Uh, it's a triple threat match with myself, Jackson Stone, and Chris Moore for the Proven Ground title. So um, I'm looking forward to that for myself personally. Uh, anything else really hasn't been announced. This Saturday I'll be in another Fatal 4-Way at DSW uh, for number one contendership for the TV title. Me, uh, Mongo, Jamie Cox, and El Ridiculoso. Well, you're really trying to be the belt collector. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad thing to strive for. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, uh, well, talk to me about that Kobo show, man. I'm I'm pretty sure I'll be there. Um, Is it on Friday? It's on uh, Saturday. I won't be there. <laughs> yeah, uh, Saturday, October 13th. Um, it'll be my first time there. I don't know. The first time they did it was last year, and that was uh, huge for uh, just in- independent wrestling in general especially in the Michigan area, to run a historic venue like that. Um, yeah, Saturday, October 13th, uh, Ultimo Dragon going to be there. Uh, Lotus, Jimmy Jacobs, Congo Kong. Uh, James Elworth will be there. Um, I think Mike Elworth. Grimm. Yeah, Elworth with no chance. Yeah, he'll be there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Any man with two hands has no chance. <laughs> Has a chance, not has no chance, dummy. Has, 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 has no, no chin. chin. <laughs> I thought you said has no chance. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm aside of Hernandez from uh, the former Impact Tag Champs. They'll be there. Um, Mercedes Mike Martinez. Elton, he'll be there. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing Mercedes Martinez. Yeah, she'll be there too. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, I think it's still announcing more people. So it's going to be a, I heard OVE's a, a gonna be big, too. huge show. Yeah, so do you, you have a match booked already for that one? Uh, uh, yeah, but I'm not too sure exactly which one to be. I'm okay. hoping it's the triple threat, but, you know, I'm still waiting to get word on that. So I'll be there in what capacity. I'm going to find out within the next week or so. All right, well, people, make sure you go get your tickets for that one because uh, Knockouts and Three Counts will be there, and uh, make sure you check out Isaiah Broner. So – do you guys uh well Kyle you weren't there. Uh well, have fuck you, you. 
you weren't there. What the fuck? I had to put my business out there in a goddamn. Street. Well, anyone that listened to the show from Saturday knows you weren't there. Maybe you didn't I was there, and I ain't say it on the. Get, get on with the story. <laughs> Anyways, Junior. so uh, you told us that you're going to be at XICW. You mentioned some of the other uh, promotions that you've been at. Uh, we're going to be either at, we're going to be at Clash sometime in the future, and also we'll be live again at BCWA. Do you see yourself wrestling for them anytime soon? They need belts to need to be collected. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get in both actually. Uh, well, well, Clash, yeah. Uh, you said BCWA. Um, that one I'm not too sure about right now, but Clash for sure. I'm trying to get down there. It's just usually when Clash runs. Recently, I'm booked somewhere else, so it's just kind of hard. Um, it's kind of hard as far as that. Usually, if I get booked before that, and I usually didn't. As soon as I get booked, I'll see class running. So I'm hoping to get down there at least a couple times before the year's out. Well, then that means we'll be seeing you real soon because knockouts and three counts will be live from Clash real soon. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, just let me know, man. I'm going to try to get down there as soon as possible. All right. So we, we asked you earlier about um, locker room etiquette for wrestlers, right? So, oh, shit. this is a, it's, it's a question we pretty much ask every wrestler we've had on the show. We just started asking this one. Yeah, we, we just started this one, and part of the inspiration was the XICW show that we went to. So, <laughs> we, we talked about, you know, wrestlers, you know, etiquette amongst themselves. But what are some rules that wrestling fans need to have when interacting with wrestlers or being at wrestling shows in general that you can think of? Um... Like for for example, we had uh, Chase Brennan on the show last week, and one of the things he said is, "Don't refer to wrestlers by their real names. Like if um, if you see Roman Reigns, don't call him Joe. You know what I mean? <laughs> to call him Roman Reigns. You know that's that's something that you you shouldn't really do. Mr. Or Anna Whitey, can I have an autograph? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, <laughs> hey, take a shower before you go to a wrestling <laughs> show." <laughs> As I mean, yeah, I would hope anybody would take a shot when they come to the show. <laughs> You'd but. be surprised. You'd be surprised. Some yeah. of these uh, people buy tickets to the shows, they look up <laughs> their arms to cheer and, uh, ooh, goddamn. <laughs> I mean, that should just I be mean, a life, but yeah. I haven't come across that many, like, messed up fans or nothing like that. Um, I was just say maybe, like I say, the, the whole respect thing. Okay. Um, just be respectful of the wrestlers because – some of, the, some of us ain't wrapped too tight, and you might catch the wrong day. New Jack. And, yeah, it's <laughs> not going to be. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be a pretty fight. You know what I'm saying? So I'll just say just be respectful of the, the wrestlers because we we have a life outside of this. You know, don't um, don't cross the, You know, I would say just don't cross that line as far as, hey, man, we, we followed you here or, like the Facebook Messenger calling and shit like that. <laughs> like that. Kinda, yeah. yeah, I had a couple with that. It's kind of <laughs> creepy. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, I was just about to ask, have you ever had that happen, man? Oh, my God. Yeah, it's like um, I'm very humble and appreciative of, you know, anybody that appreciates, you know, the, it, it, anything I do. But... Yeah, the messenger calls, man. Just, <laughs> no. <laughs> Stay no, out man. my DMs, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm not going to answer it. Like, I'll, I'll respond. Like, you shoot me a message and stuff like that. I'm just respectful. But once it, like, that calling me on, yeah. It's a no. <laughs> now, we also have one um, about uh, touching the wrestler as they're working. Like, if, like, say you're in a match and you lean up against the barricade. Are you all right if the fans like pat you on the back or something, or you just don't interact with me at all? Don't touch me. Just let me do what I'm doing. No, that's fine. Like most of the times, like if you like, I'm into it. You know what I'm doing, so I, I won't even like if you just pat me on the back like a job or something like that. Like I won't even probably won't even notice it until like I'm looking back on you know watching the match or something. So that's fine. Like that's not that's not too harmful or nothing like that. Now, if you clean, I can't promise you you're going you're gonna to remember what happened afterwards. 
<laughs> All right, guys, got any last questions for our guests? No, not off the top of my head. Okay. Not off the bottom of mine. <laughs> well, I, I, is there anything that you want to tell the people? Anything you need to get off your chest, man? You got, you got the open uh, forum right here, man. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you guys for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Um, anytime I get a chance to um, just let people know a little bit more about me, um, I appreciate any forum. Also, every promoter, uh, every promotion that has given me an opportunity. Uh, more chance to display my ability. Uh, thank you, uh, DBA, Steve Rivera, uh, Briar, Horace Lamb, um, everybody. It's a lot of people. Uh, Frank, uh, Frank down at Berlin Championship Wrestling. Everybody gives me opportunity. All the vets that gives me advice. Huck, everybody. Uh, very appreciative. This Friday at Fraser Lions Club. Uh, fan appreciation night for XICW. Come out all tickets, all seats, ten dollars. This Saturday at DSW um, at the Brass Key in Wyandotte, and October thirteenth at uh, Cobo. We'll be back. We'll be back at Cobo for XICW. Make sure y'all come out, and grab a ticket. Um, I don't, it's too many shows, man. I can't <laughs> remember all this shit. <laughs> I'm trying to go off the top of my head. But thanks, everybody, for all the support, uh, all our promoters. Everybody, thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate it a lot. Before we let you go, man, I do have one final question for you, since it's probably the first time either on the indies or bigger stage where I've seen it. So you're going by Seven Mile and stuff, which I think is cool because you don't hear stuff like that too much. What made you put that in par- as part of your name other than I'm assuming it's got meaning to you? Um, just bringing like as much as real life as into as into it as I can. I used to stay over on Seven Mile over by Osborne High School in Tepper. So I'm from that area. Yeah, I'm from that area. So just incorporating as much as I can. Um, like I say, I'm a humble dude. What you see is what you get. So I'm just incorporating as much as I can into it, bringing it into uh, my character as, as much as I can. Nice. Like I said, that's something I had to ask because I figured that was probably the case. But that's the first time I've heard a seven mile chant at a wrestling, <laughs> <laughs> wrestling show. I'm like, are they cheering what I think they're cheering? Like <laughs> seven mile, <up>, big. <laughs> Oh, and, and shout out for hitting that uh, that seven mile destroyer, man. That's one of my favorite moves, man. <laughs> I, I don't man, know, I appreciate it, man. I don't know if that's what you're calling it, but that's what I'm calling. It. I'll call it the seven mile destroyer, man. That, <laughs> I was looking for a name, man. I appreciate it. Bam! Oh shit, he done named it. Trademark that shit. Hey, hey, look, <laughs> everybody, knockouts and three counts just named his move the seven mile destroyer. We naming moves. We getting battle royals. <laughs> We're doing shit, man. We doing it. Uh, quick question before we let you go. Are you going to be on that BCW show in uh, Belleville on October 7th? October 7th, I think it is? Uh, no, I won't. Okay. Uh, you said October. Let me see the date. October 7th. October 7th. Yeah, a lot of the Impact wrestlers are going to be there on that show. Uh, oh, you know, um, I may be, I may be there. I, I, I'm not... I may be there, but I won't be on the lineup. Okay. I'm going to try my best to get there. Yep. So I just want to, you know, meet and try to pick some guys' brains and, you know, help help out in other capacities. I won't be on the lineup, but I'm just going to try to help as best as I can. Okay. That's what's up, man. I'll definitely be there. I'm trying to uh, I'll be there. Try to talk to Kiara Hogan personally. But um, <laughs> that's me. The line here. starts <laughs> behind <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Believe that. Hey, man. Faye Jackson is your girl, man. Kiara Hogan's mine. Uh, <laughs> Well played. You well motherfuckers. Played. <laughs> well played. But I, Isaiah, you got a social media that people can uh, follow you, man? Oh, yeah. Uh, Facebook, Isaiah Bonner. Um, Instagram, Eat Zeke Eat. Um, YouTube, Isaiah Bonner. And that's all for right now. I'm working on a, a Pro Wrestling Tees uh, site right now. So hopefully I'll be up in the next week or so. Make sure it has Seven Mile on it. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, once again, man, thank you for joining us on the show, man. Really do appreciate it, man. Thank y'all, man. Y'all have a good one. All Thanks, right, man. you too. All righty. That was Isaiah Broner, man. That was a very good conversation. Man. That was that was a good interview. I enjoyed that one. I, I did too.
Good times. Good times. Good times. All right, folks. We still got time. No. Don't we? No. We're out of time. Oh, fuck it. So let's go ahead and do our, uh, well, Kyle, do an intro and then do an say the exact same stuff over again. That'll be your outro. And by the way, don't <laughs> kick people in the face, uh, Bella. Ooh. That's some bullshit. Uh. You see? She knocked Liv oh, Morgan she, the oh, fuck out. Oh, she knocked out. the fuck out of Liv Morgan. <laughs> she knocked Liv Morgan the fuck oh, out man, with some was, yes was, kicks. It was bad. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> you, know, you know what her new nickname is now. It's Botch Mode. Damn. Was it Nikki or Brie? It was Brie. She was doing the I, yes kick. She was doing the yes kick. And she I'm just, she, was, she, she wasn't looking. I'm not going to lie, bro. There's been a couple of those knees where I thought she needed this. She's getting, the, I mean, off, what bro. was it? The two suicide dives when she almost killed her fucking self a couple weeks ago. I guess the riot squad. But no, this one, she, <laughs> she's, she's doing the yes kick. Was this tonight or did it Matt, already This, is, this, this is, is Monday night. night. Go Damn, look up I any, wasn't paying attention. Look up any, no. She literally knocked her the fuck out where she had to, and people were, Brian Alvarez was pissed. He tweeted it today because. She grabs Liv by the neck and pulls her over to the uh, to the side of the ring so she can do a tag, and then they still put her back in the match. Oh, I know the spot. You're, they I had know Chris, you're a man. About. You can see him on camera on the side, giving her a mini concussion test to make sure. Yeah, she's Yeah, okay. I saw that. That shit was bad. I mean, she literally went limp. She knocked her the fuck out. So, Kyle, do your intro and outro. <laughs> Yeah, Hi, first, this is Kyle Collison. The right. first show at 26, this is Kyle Collison. You can find me Junior. on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Knockout, at Detroit N-O-K-O-U-T. Keep following Knockouts and Three Counts. Follow us at Knockouts and Three Counts podcast page on Facebook. Please, when you see these episodes, share the fuck out of them, please. Uh, you can check out our website. We need to get more active on there at ko3cpod.com. And the same on Twitter, except it needs to show up ko3cpod, not Devin the 6'3", but it's all good. <laughs> Uh, at, with Where's all that going? said, fuck your couch and uh, fuck the guy that looks like a smiley face from Walmart. <laughs> you know we can kick your ass, Dick, because it's your birthday, so you can get the birthday legs. I'll kick you in the dick. You won't get to kick my ass. Birthday legs, baby. Yeah. Mr. Campbell, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and throw out your social media? Is there anything that you got coming up, sir? Um, nothing coming up yet. But and shout out to the soul taker. I know you're watching right now. Okay. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Team Chaos. That's K A Y O S. Facebook, Kyle J. Campbell. And uh, not to sound uh, contrived, but like, share, and subscribe to everything we have because this is, you know, we, we do this because we love it. But if we're just doing it and four people are watching, share it. Share it. We Everybody need share five it. Five people. You share 50,000 memes a day. <laughs> share <laughs> this <laughs> shit. Just me. Share the shit. Hey, hey, all you got to do is hit like. And Shit, it takes two that, seconds out of your day. Two it's seconds. Come on. Appreciate if you if you like what we're doing, get it out there so other people can see. Even if you don't like it, share the shit anyway. Exactly. You, <laughs> I share, don't care. you share enough shit that you don't like. Share this shit too. I'm putting that on a shirt. Share this shit. Share this shit. Hashtag share this shit. All right. We're hashtagging that right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Devin McKenzie. You can find me on Twitter at Devin 63. It's D E V I N T H E 63. You can find me on Instagram at All Steak No Sizzle. That's one word. Make sure you check out the Reality Era News page on Facebook. Like Kyle said, go to KO3CPod.com, KO3CPod on Twitter, KO3CPod on Instagram, and the Knockouts of Three Cows page on Facebook. If you're looking for a car, check out SouthfieldQualityCars.com. Once you go through the inventory and you find the vehicle you would like to purchase, you just say, hey, hey, I want that Jeep Cherokee right there. You go in there, you buy that Jeep Cherokee. <laughs> and you say, hey, the guy from Knockouts of Three Cows told me to tell you 19309. That's 19309. Not, not, not 1939, short. but 19309. And I want my $500 off on that car. Not the white what? one, not the short one, but the other one. <laughs> Get $500 off on the car, people. You need a car right now, don't you? 19309, that's your reference code. Get $500 off. I took my headphones off because I thought his ass was going to scream that shit into the damn micro. <laughs> Shout out to Mike Blackwell. Shout out to Matthew Priest from Clash and BCWA. Thank you once Thank again you for, for having us. Thank you. Hey, had a great time. Shout out to Colt Cabana for taking the time to do an interview with us as well. Legend. The legend. Yeah, hey, Jenks, buy me a coat. Yeah. Uh, I, I get you one from the refrigerator. Cheap <laughs> best. <laughs> you cheap best. <laughs> and shout out to Podcast Detroit. I love you guys, man. I like them. <laughs> With all that being said, fuck your couch. And th that's why I took mine off. <laughs> <laughs> when you see me take yes. mine off, that's why. Bye. I know. I, I can see. He was, I saw the. I saw <laughs> his eyes. He was like, wait, wait. He, 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 he got up. He's ready. <laughs> How about that? That's why I took my shoe off. I'm like, I see that little.